Hey guys, don't mind my hair, it looks like shit, but whatever. Um, it's funny, I actually lost a lot of hair within the last year uh, after having my baby. And so this is all my new hair growing in, and it looks ridiculous. But anyway, I wanted to make uh, this video today because I am... Um, just under 25 days sober ish I think I'm like 22 but I'm not really counting um, I'm just not drinking and I wanted to talk today about entertaining alcohol after you have been sober for a little bit and the reason for this is because it's tripped me up so many times in the past and I know that it's very easy to feel confident in your ability to abstain or to drink in moderation after you've gone sober for a while. Um, typically after the month marker is when I start to feel like good. Um, the energy comes back, things start to regulate a little bit, moods uh, are better to manage um, and I just start to feel good, you know, better. And it's different for everyone, but I think that you get to a point where because you feel good and because you're feeling more confident um, and more healthy, you start to feel like, oh, well, I can handle a drink or two. And that's where a lot of people get tripped up right? Um, because you can't. <laughs> you just can't. Because um, I know for me, when I had a six-month sobriety stretch, as soon as I started drinking again, it was just on weekends, and I'd have one or two with friends. Um, and then it turned into getting drunk, but just on weekends, not during the week. And more recently, as I mentioned in my last video, um, it turned into drinking every single night to cope with the stress of becoming a new parent again. Um, and so what happens with alcohol is that, you know, the confidence that you have initially in the beginning that motivates you to think, oh, well, I can drink in moderation and I can have the one or two drinks you have to remember something. That confidence is going to quickly diminish with your drinking, right? Because it's the drinking that puts you back into that state, that cycle of needing it and needing more of it. And then you're back, you're full swing, you know, into drinking again. So you, you have to remember, you know, keep this at the forefront of your mind. You're not always going to have that healthy, energetic, confident view of alcohol. That's that's a very short-lived, you're only going to get that once, right? And you worked so hard to get it, you know? However many months you were sober, you worked so hard to get it. And you're basically throwing it away once you start drinking again. So it's important to remember things like, you know, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. So why mess with it? Why entertain it? When you know, you know, and especially if you've been doing this a while, like I have, and you understand, like, how this works for you, then at some point, you know, you can't really call it a disease anymore. You, you know, it's you. You're choosing to make the decision over and over again. You're choosing to say, well, things were good. And, you know, I think I can handle it. And you can't, you know, and 9 out of 10 people can't, if not 10 out of 10. Most people will return to the destructive um, ways of alcohol, the abuse of alcohol. So, I think it's important to remember how good you feel and to really... Let that good feeling sit with you for a while so that you're able to recall, you know, um, how amazing it is to not drink. So that you can keep that as an inspiration to you whenever you're feeling like, maybe I can do this, you know, maybe I can have a drink at parties so I don't look weird, or maybe I can 
go out occasionally with a friend and and have a drink so that I'm not the one who's not drinking. You know, like, who gives a fuck how you appear to other people? You know what I mean? You can justify it any way that you want, but there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I don't do that. Or, you know, I'm not doing that right now. You know what I mean? There's so many different ways that you can approach a social situation and be the one who's not partaking. And that's okay. Um, you know, there should never be any pressure. There should never be any obligation. You have to stay true to yourself. You have to stay committed to your values and, and your goal of sobriety. It has to be so important to you that nothing around you is going to affect that choice. Um, not even your own temptations or your own justifications in your mind about how you can maybe tolerate it this time because, you know, you, you finally have it under control. You never have it under control, okay? Because the memory of alcohol, the memory of the cycle stays fresh in your subconscious at all times and the moment that you have that sip, it instantly comes back to haunt you and you've blown it and you're going to be upset with yourself. And you're going to feel like you have to start over. And that new beginning is going to feel like a failure. Do you really want to expose yourself to that time and time again? No, it gets old. And it gets exhausting to constantly put that kind of failure and pressure on yourself. You know, just don't do it. Um, yeah. I haven't had any desire to drink in the last month and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so focused on other things that I just, I don't, I don't even think about sitting around and drowning my sorrows. I feel like what's important during this time, Jesus, my hair looks a hot mess. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> what's important during this time is that you focus on filling your, your, your time with things that are going to be uplifting, things that are, you know, give yourself a project. And don't, don't quit, you know, throw yourself into something and, and tell yourself, you know, I'm going to do this, you know, whatever it is, a craft, uh, a business venture, Maybe, you know, you are you decide that you're going to totally deep clean your house or you're going to remodel something or you're going to learn a new thing um, or, you know, you're going to get yourself to meetings two to three times a week, you know, something. It's, it, here's the thing, right? When we're dependent on alcohol, it's very hard for us to gather that kind of structure for ourselves, right? So it's like, okay... I'm dependent on alcohol and I want to get sober and I'm also trying to be strong for myself and to be, you know, the mom of my own life, um, so to speak, and, and, and create these, these structured activities for myself so that I can, you know, uh, stay focused on my recovery. And it's like, it's tough because like, you know, we're, dependent on booze. So like, how can we be expected to be so organized and so, you know, so invested in our recovery? Like we have these destructive tendencies, right? So like you have to work extra hard to get yourself motivated, to get yourself engaged, to get yourself involved. Yes. So I just want to say that too, that I understand the difficulty in not only abstaining, but also providing yourself with these opportunities to stay busy and to stay focused, other focused, focused on other things, you know? I know it's challenging. And that's why I recommend that you make people aware of your sobriety so that they can support you in it. Because if you're doing it alone and you're hiding it and you're, because you're ashamed that you even had the issue to begin with and you don't want other people to like look down on you or whatever, make people aware. Because it's only going to be better in that case, you know, for you to have that support and that understanding. <laughs> Rather than going it alone and being your, your number one supporter at the same time that you're, like, trying to learn how to 
you know, knit or crochet <laughs> or revamp your house, you know, it's a lot to take on. And I just, I think that the more people that you make aware, um, the better. Um, yeah, that's, that's, I just wanted to say, you know, don't trust the moderation lie because it is bullshit, you know, and it'll get you into trouble and, uh, it'll throw you right back where you didn't want to be. So just keep strong and tell yourself, I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm not even going to entertain it. I am going to keep going because think of how great you feel, dude. I'm like 22 days in and I'm telling you, like, I have great energy. Like, I feel so much better. You know, like, I'm a little emotional here and there, which is normal. But, like, you know, I'm not freaking out. Like, I feel more, more in control of what I'm doing, you know, my life. Like, things are manageable. Things aren't, you know, like, I'm not super irritable and, like, swinging from one end to the next. Like, I, I, I feel more grounded. I feel more stable. So, stick with it. It's very important. You know, it's very stabilizing. It's very, it's very, it's very good for, for so many things. Just don't drink, guys. You know, don't even mess with it. All right. Well, have a good day. I will talk to you soon.